All right, uh, last thing here on the Take Command podcast, Craig Hoffman and Logan Paulson. Uh, got a YouTube comment uh, the other day, Logan, that, you know, we get this we get this pretty frequently, so I figured that I would just I would just throw it out there for you to address right here on this podcast. <laughs> Although, apparently, if I, I eat more Wheaties, maybe they'll be talking like this about Craig me Craig Hoffman, yeah. Uh, but someone goes, hey, man, that Paulson guy really, really knows his ball. Like, when's he going to coach? <laughs> uh, which I, I hilariously, uh, or I laughed to that. Cause I think it's hilarious that it's like, what, well, he played 10 years in the league. Um, do you think that most guys that play football don't know ball? I, I just, I genuinely find it funny when like you start to really get into like football, football talk and yeah. you know fans who don't hear the game talked about like that on any kind of regular basis. Cause it's just not part of the everyday discussion. I get talked to uh, by my bosses when I talk about the game in too much depth on the radio right. because it's, it's not digestible, but that's what we're here for for on the podcast but people are like whoa and it's like yeah that's this is how this works but you were a guy who you know 10 years in the league in part because of your brain like yeah you were mm. great at throwing your face in there and a fearlessness <laughs> and a strength and like there's physical physical traits that benefited you as well but like you knew the game you understood it and that made you a huge asset uh far beyond your ability to block a you know a, a five technique or a three technique yeah. um so the coaching thing you, yeah. Do, is that something that's actually interesting to you at some point uh, beyond the high school level that you do it at now? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I it was, first off, it's very flattering when people say that to you because it means a lot. But I also think it's like you're just kind of you're kind of peeling back the veil on something that like if you think I'm smart talking about it, like you should hear Kyle talk about it or Sean. Or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I you would be like, Logan, you're a total idiot. You know what I'm saying? And again, that's like those guys are, you know, I don't even know, like master genius level football guys. Right. And that's why they're at where they're at. So, um, so again, like it's, it's cool to hear that. Um, I, you know, I've had opportunities to coach in different places, like, cause I know some of the people that are still coaching like McDaniels and Frank Steven Smith, excuse me, down in uh, Miami asked me to come down there, which would have been a great opportunity, but there's also like a, a big time element, you know, that I think a lot of people don't understand that you're, you're like obsessive about football and I am that way, but this is a way for me to kind of manage my obsessive qualities in a more healthy way. Like I can talk a couple times a week about it with you. I can talk about it with Julie. I can watch a fair amount of film, but I'm not spending an 80 hour work week trying to look for that microscopic edge against whoever we're playing that week. And uh, so that, again, it, I think it's a much more healthy thing for my family, you know, cause like, again, when I played, I, people forget this about me, but I'd get up at five thirty in the morning. I'd be in the bu building by six, and I would stay until seven. And I did that every single day, you know. And um, I know a lot of people have similar work schedules, but I was missing, and so I'd stay till seven. So I wouldn't be home till seven thirty, eight o'clock. I'd miss the kids' bedtime, you know, all that kind of stuff. So now I'm trying to balance family in a different way. And like you said, I do coach at high school, right? And that's a lot of fun. It's very rewarding. And in some ways it's more rewarding than it would be at the NFL because you can actually help people grow. And as a coach, Greg, you also can relate to that, yeah. I'm sure. Cause like when I have clients, like some people are like, oh, why do you train like Susie soccer mom as a strength and conditioning coach? And for me, it's like, because you can see growth, you can see change. Like as opposed to when I train like an NFL guy, it's more just like about managing and tweaking, which is also very fun. But the the progress is something that I think you can speak to as well. Like there's something very fulfilling about this level of coaching. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool to say like, yeah, I trained an NFL guy and that's on my resume and it gives you, you know, clout. You know, for me, obviously you've got that already built in because you played, whether that's correct or not, because just because you played doesn't mean you know what you're doing in the weight room. And correct. there are plenty of NFL guys that can prove that um, <laughs> the, but you know the, the rewards you get from whether it's helping a, a division one you know prospect get that scholarship offer right. or just their parent um, be in less pain like yeah mm -hmm. that that progress that you know ability to maintain a lifestyle that ability to get out of pain that ability to watch someone master and own a skill like it's super rewarding um, on the coaching front at the quote unquote lower levels. But, you know, one of the things that makes 
a coach in that field great is like you don't care whether you're helping someone score the game winning goal in the World Cup or win a Super Bowl or keeping you know help them put their socks on easier in the morning. Right. Like, they get to set the goals, and if you help them achieve them, like that's where the reward comes from. But I I, do, I definitely don't think people realize in the NFL like the time commitment that it takes. That yeah. you know we we as media get there um, you know in the middle of the day and like they've already been there for hours and we would go home and. Uh, you know, after all the press conferences and everything. And, and there were times even, you know, my first year on the beat working for 980, the first time around, um, I would sometimes host night shows and we had a studio at the park. And so I would be there until 10 o'clock at night because I was hosting a seven to 10 radio show mm -hmm. and the coaches were still there. Right. Like Sean would still be there. Uh, Jay would still be there. Like the, there's a ton of cars in the parking lot at 10 o'clock at night or like, you know, you'd have to have someone let you in the building to go, go take a leak in between yeah. segments. And you know, the OC's walking past the door and you're waving, you're like, Hey, can you let me in? I'm just going to the bathroom real quick. And they're like, oh. yeah, Hey, here you go. So like, you, you know, once you see that, if you've been around an NFL building, even for a couple of days, um, randomly throughout a season to host a radio show at night, mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of time commitment we're talking about here? Um, and that's just, it's just different. And the family life balance stuff is, uh, it's pretty nasty. Um, yeah, it's so pretty nasty, I think but it's, a, it's also, it's also really exciting. And you know, yeah. another thing to your point, it's, like, the, it's the highest level of the profession. So like, right. I get it as well. That's yeah. not like a knock on guys, not, not if all coaches are right. bad family people. It's, and so there are some really cool things about it, but like, you know, like at this point in my life, like I, I want to prioritize my family. So that's why I'm not doing it. And then the other thing is like when I was in San Francisco, every single coach had a, I don't know if I told you the story. They had a cot in their office mm. and you know, you could tell the guys had slept there, you know, like, cause, uh, what is it? Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday are the big game plan nights. So guys would just crash there at the facility and then get up and, you know, bang it out in the morning. And it's just like, that's fun. That's cool. You're with the guys, you're building something and that's awesome. And that's really exciting to me, but it's also like, man, you know, like it's hard to justify, yeah. you know, you also want to go to your kid's hockey practice yes, and, that's and right. have him feel supported by dad <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, and not have your wife ready to kill you because she's got to do <laughs> everything probably, else. That's probably the main one, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, I thought that was a, a fun little discussion. Um, cause people ask about it with frequency and now we can just cut this little clip up and be like, <laughs> does Logan want to coach title? Okay, good. Yeah. Check. Uh, save this link somewhere. Bookmark it. Hey, Logan, do you want to coach? Reply with comment link. That's what we're going to do every time from now on. Uh, if you want more insight from us, since Logan, Logan wants to share it with us instead of, you know, trying to find that little edge with an 80 hour work week, uh, make sure you're subscribed, whatever it is that you're listening or watching right now, YouTube, Apple podcasts, Spotify, and of course the free Odyssey app. We'll see you for more insight and information and a full game preview on Sunday for countdown to kick off starting at 10 AM on the team 980 and 1067. The fan, of course I'm on Monday through Friday on the Team 980 for the Hoffman Show as well. We'll see you then and there, wherever it is that we'll see you next. This has been Take Command from Odyssey Sports. subscribe as long as you do subscribe to one of these platforms that would be very helpful for us yeah do it or logan's gonna come to your house and he's gonna be a sif blocker and knock you it's over sif, uh, yeah cut the legs out from under you right you can't even do that on the field but we can do it in real life <laughs>